G'day guys, Cam here from thefirstroom.co.nz and today I'm setting up a new aquarium and I'm pretty excited about it, so let's get into this. The Fish Room, helping you keep beautiful aquariums. Okay, so what am I doing today? Today I am setting up a 20 litre aquarium, so it's very small, it's about this, by about this, by about this. It's pretty small. And the reason I'm doing it is because I have entered an aquascaping competition. Now, let's face it, I suck at aquascaping. I'm never ever going to call myself an aquascaper, but I love the idea of it. Um, so today I've decided to do a Dutch aquarium setup, or at least my impersonation of a Dutch aquarium setup in this. So let's get into it. So this is the aquarium. It's not very big, like I said. It's just over a foot and a half long. That way it's three quarters of a foot, 240 type thing, and it's about the same high, so it's not very big. So it's about 20 litres, so it's going to be a heck of a challenge. Done a bit of playing with the box that it came in, this is kind of what I want to recreate in aquarium form. Let's go! First things first, the protective plastic's off, and the background's off. And we're in. All right, so I've got Aquasolum here as my substrate. I've not used it before, it's round little balls. Uh, they're quite soft. I can buy it, but I unfortunately can't sell it because I'm an online retailer. So it's already wet because I've previously used this in an Aquascape. Look at me talking more technical using that for escape. So I want to push this towards the back so I want to put some height in and around the back. I'm just going to kind of level them off for now. I'm not going to be putting any hardscape in here, I'm going to use full plant. I was thinking about putting some very, very small pieces of wood. Throw some Anubias on, but I don't know if I will. No. So I've got that pretty low at the front. Just a little bit empty there. A little bit lower at the front. And the rails will all sloped at the back. And I've been a little bit concerned that that might not stay in place. So I've got a bit of ice cream container. I'm just going to cut that up and slice some pieces into it. But you don't need to see that. So I've cut up my little bits of plastic and I'm going to put them in. I've got a few bigger ones if needs be. Um, but I'm just hoping it's not going to affect too much of the root growth as well. I just want to keep a decent chunk of that height kind of up and behind. Cut another piece. Now I've staggered them. I don't know why I've staggered them. It just seemed like the right thing to do. Hopefully that keeps the substrate up. Looks like we cover them. I feel right there where they are. So that is what I'm working with. Alright, let's get some plants moving. See the height. I'm rolling with there. So I wanted to run uh, tinless in through here. I think it's got a really nice fine leaf and um, it's a little bit of a red color too, which I think was quite nice. But unfortunately, I couldn't find any, so I'm running uh, dwarf Sagittaria instead because I have no issues finding that. Apart from wholesale, I've got plenty here. So I take the bands off and I'll begin planting. Alright, so the next corner I want to fill is in through here. I want to probably hit around about that mark. So I believe I've got um, Aracutia. Please correct me if my words are wrong. I'm always happy to be corrected. 
So some of this is immersed growing, some of this is submersed growing. Reason I'm wanting to put it here is I like the shape of the leaf. When it's submersed grown, it's very thin and pointy. Um, I'm going to be able to cut it down, keep it quite low, give a little bit of extra height over the dwarf sedge, and it's also got a nice colour contrast. So I think it will kind of mix quite well of a colour contrast, a leaf shape contrast, and a height contrast as well to the dwarf sedge. So I'm pretty happy with hopefully how that'll work. You know, I might be completely wrong and it might look absolutely horrible. But for now, that is what I'm gonna go with. All right, so the next plant I'm gonna put up and through is baby tears. And I want it in kind of in a small patch in here. <clears throat> I sort of be using this because it is a, it's not the baby tears that I'm sure the American watchers are used to. Uh, but it's a colour contrast to the last plant and the leaf structure is completely different. Let me get out of it, a little white card. So that's why I'm using that up through here. Uh, this stuff is still emerged, gross. You can see, ooh, there's a rock. You can see already that there's a color contrast between the baby tears, the arachuta, and the dwarf sage, and the shape and the leaf structures and stuff like that. There's some different varying contrasts to look at. how much of a pain this was going to be to escape this tank because it's so damn small I'm trying to keep all of these below those white cards I'm planning on plant 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 that it will grow out a little bit and then trimming it later on um, instead of, sort of trimming it neat and tidy right now That's the baby tears. Alright, time to move on to the next plant. Alright, so the next plant in. Twisted Valisneria. So I consider this is going to be a bit of a risk for multiple reasons. First of all, I've never been overly successful growing Twisted Val. Just the first reason. Second reason, it doesn't really enjoy um, Flourish Excel because this is a low-tech aquascaping competition we can't use pressurized CO2 or anything like that and without being able to use Flourish XL that's kind of going to make life a little bit harder to get a little bit of extra sort of oomph through the growth but that's all right and third one is that I think Felicinera can kind of overwhelm anything pretty quickly and it's a big plant for a small space so I think that might be a bit risky. However, because it grows quite tall, I think it'll give really good contrast. Because it's long and wavy, I think the leaf structure will also give a really good contrast compared to everything else. And so I think the risk is going to be worth the reward, which is why I'm still going to use it. Um, because like you can see, all four plants have got a different structure of leaf. All four plants have got a different color shade going through them so it's kind of all uh, building for different things to be looked at so I'm hoping that the Velocinaria will really give that extra oomph and it won't end up just a pile of mushy brown in the back corner but we'll find out in a few weeks time. Next for the background red love wig here. Really think this is gonna pop. Beautiful coloration. I don't have very much, but it's selling like hotcakes. I only managed to snag myself one bundle of it when I first got it in. I want to put it right at the back, right between 
the twisted valve and the Balenci when I get some in there. So the reason behind that is they're both green and I just really want this red to pop. So I don't have a heck of a lot of it. I'm going to leave a good patch open that I can cut and replant into this corner. As you can already see, it's beginning to break up that colour, which is quite nice. So I'm going to do it bigger. I'll replant them into this little patch here and then the Balenci kind of in through here. Next plant. So here I've got Sunset Polysperma. Um, bought it from a wholesaler a while ago. It's not really giving me much indication that it's going to be that beautiful pink colour. I'm forever hopeful. It's not really finished converting, so it might still get there. But I'll cram that in through here. I'm going to try and keep it about a medium height. I think that beautiful pink colour will contrast really well with that green through here and the bright red at the back and I think the white um, veins that come through it I think will really look quite special in through that as well but kind of mix it up a little bit and again different leaf structure to everything and that's kind of part of, part of what I'm trying to achieve as well. So now we've got a big pile of plants and uh, about half of the tank and I'm beginning to be concerned that I can't quite get all the plants that I wanted in here. As we can see. Next plant I've selected is because of the leaf structure again. Slightly different. Originally I thought it might have been Roundifolia. It might not be. It might be Indica. I'm not 100% sure. Um, nice wee stack of that. here could have broken that up a little bit more cam let's try that again So it's beginning to look like a mess, which concerns me. Like I said, I'm not an aquascaper. And I've never even tried the style of aquarium before, so who knows what's going to happen. Hopefully it works. <clears throat> but basically I'm aiming for different colours, different shapes, and different structures. And so far I believe that I'm achieving that quite nicely. There's the red lotus in here to take up this patch, and then I've got this little group in through here. Next plant. So I bought a stack of plants over because I don't think my phone's really enjoying me getting it wet all the time. So next plant is red pine. This can be a bit of a, a pest of a plant. I'll stack it in up through the middle again. Can get quite weedy. So I think I have to pay a bit of attention to this plant. red pop right through the middle there as it sort of brings through will be quite nice. Next plant I'm going to be using is Ambulia. The reason behind the Ambulia is because it grows like a weed as well, which is fantastic. I think the bright green, completely different leaf structure is going to look really good against the behind the tiger lotus. Also because it's bright green, and the colour will contrast really well. I think it'll contrast quite well against a few of the plants in there. Again, it takes over quite easily, so I'm going to be paying a bit of attention to it, but that's okay. So that's in through there. Don't know the name of this plant, but I really like the way that it looks from above. It gives a little tinge of colour underneath it as well. So it's going to the back corner. Again, more contrasting colour, more contrasting leaf shape.
leaves a patch in there. Lince, which I've still yet to find. A patch in here for my tiger lotus. So that's the plants planted. Tank itself came with a city bitty tiny little filter, so I'm gonna give that a nudge, see how it goes. Oh we've got takeoff. I don't like it, or I'm going to use a little Ehon surface skimmer to fill track. It's on! Some condensation build up. It's on. So we'll just pop these bits of beauty back in. It would appear that my hand being in the water is just too much water. Just chucked a little, little bit of light over top of it to give you an idea of what it might look like. Um, all the plants are leaning this way, which I'm assuming is from the filter. And the water's still cold and everything, so um, I'll come back in an hour or so when it's cleared up a little bit and it might be looking a bit better. Alright, so this is two weeks in on my little Dutch style aquarium that I've got going on. seems to be growing through okay as you can see I still don't have my red lotus that I want to put in this corner and this little gap here is beginning to frustrate let me a little bit um, but other than that it's okay I'm beginning to think that I may not actually use this aquarium for the um, aquascaping competition that I'm entering I'll rephrase that I'm not going to use this as uh, the tank that I enter. A, I've made a video of it and I can't be showing people what I've done because it's part of the rules. And B, I just don't want to. I've been playing around with another one that I'm going to use instead, I think. Uh, but I'm still going to take on this Dutch style aquarium because I quite like the way that it's developing and I'm enjoying learning and whatnot. So that's kind of where we're at with it for the time being. Um, I've noticed that some of the plants kind of tangle together, so I've been using my handy dandy tweezers and just kind of pulling them apart and it kind of defining the groups a little bit better. I'm also a little bit disappointed in this up here, which is the Hygrophilia Polysperma Sunset because it's not really um, variegated and it's not changing. If you wait there a second. Uh, so this here is a variegated polysperma As you can see there the white lines are coming through it It's not there and the color is completely different on the tip of that leaf there Which I'm not getting anything on there. So I might rip this plant out here this poly and put in some new um, Sunset poly which I know is through there because I think it's a beautiful stem plant and it's definitely one of my favorites And I think I'd be disappointed in myself if I didn't add that texture with the leaves and the different color and stuff through it and I think I'd be quite annoyed in the end if I didn't do it so I'm probably going to do that this afternoon if there's a quick two week update of it I'll do another video proper full video of it in a couple weeks or a month's time once it's bettered in a bit more